everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Nancy Bronstein. I am a Viking and FAF educator for the SVP Worldwide Company, which stands for Singer, Viking, and FAF. And today I had the pleasure of interviewing Wendy Owens, who is one of our newest educators, also in the Viking and FAF education department. Welcome, Wendy. So glad you could join me today. Hi, Nancy. Happy to be here. I'm glad you could make the time. Could you tell us a little bit about your your sewing history, how you got into doing sewing education and that type of thing? Well, um, when I was younger, I never sewed. Um, my mom sewed all the time and she did stretch and sew classes. And when she would go to the Joanne's store, um, I would just, you know, bow my head like, oh, that's boring to me. <laughs> I was just like, really, mom, do I have to? And uh, as I got as I got older, I started being a little more creative and I started um, college and I started out as um, a fashion design major and doing theater as my minor. But as I got over into the theater department, I just I fell in love with it. I said, this is the world where I, I need to be. So I, I changed my major to theater with an emphasis on costume design. So um I just continued with that. I did work in theater for some time. Um, I had children, and you know, in theater, the days are long, the nights are even longer. So I did, I did back out of theater uh, for a while. I worked for SVP um, when they were VSM when they were still in Ohio. I worked in their software support department, and from there, I just, you know, I just kept elevating into different styles of sewing, and I, you know, taught myself quilting. Um, because where I was teaching at a dealership, quilting was the big thing. And in order for me to teach, I would have to you know, get into more quilting. So I taught myself that and mostly did applique there because I just there's something about the applique that I just absolutely loved. But I, I do still um, do costuming on the side, though. And what's your favorite type of sewing? My favorite type of sewing I'm going to say right now is uh, smaller projects, things that I can get done in a short amount of time. Uh, when I, I work on costuming, um, those are longer projects. And a lot of times it's alterations and alterations is not my favorite thing to do. So I think right now I'm more into doing things that are more of a instant gratification kind of thing, if you will. I like to see a result for for the time that I'm spending in in my sewing room, but I honestly, uh, costuming is by far, you know, the first, my first and favorite. Now, do you make any clothing? You know, not, that's not costumes, like clothing for yourself or for your kids. Um, I used to when when they were younger. I made all kinds of you know twirly dresses, and of course, I made their first communion dresses and their. Uh, christening gowns and things like that. But I honestly, no, I really didn't do too much um, garment sewing. Um, when I was thinner, I did for me. But now that my body has changed, it's a little bit harder for me to fit myself. So I'm going to say no, I don't do too much. Um, but I am a whiz at pajama pants. Got those down to like an hour from cutting to sewing. <laughs> yeah, I like those quick projects too. You know, with the the um, travel that we do, we don't have a lot of time for personal sewing. Right. Um, you know, we do do a lot of sewing and embroidery, but it's for uh, samples for our classes and to right. people what they can do with the top of the line machines. So I see that butterfly um, in the uh, mobile, mobile, mobile. In the mobile, background. Mobile, yeah. Yeah, mobile, mobile in the background that looks like free uh um freestanding lace is it right? is freestanding lace yes it's um three different butterflies that are within my sew nets and i resized them and filled up a hoop with some wash away stabilizer and just let the machine go and you know because i have the app it told me hey wendy it's time to uh change your bobbin so it was nice i was able to work on other things while the machine was going. So uh, I don't want to say it was a quick project because there was three hoopings and each hooping took close to nine hours to do. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and then stringing them was, was a little time consuming. So um, unfortunately I cannot travel with that sample any longer because it just, um, 
it's it gets so tangled and it makes a mess. And then by the time I pull it out, it's it's not it's not represented the way it should be. So I think I'm just going to leave it here hanging in my sewing room. And when people come to visit me via internet, it will be there. And um, you do, or you have for quite a long time, as you said, been working with the software. So you have almost um, a specialty in that, or how would you describe? I don't know if you could say a specialty. Um, mm -hmm. I have been with the software since, I don't know if anybody remembers System 5 way back in the day. Mm -hmm. I've, I've grown with it. So when there is an upgrade, I always moved with it. So I was always amazed by the features that they would add. I remember back in System 5, we had to build our own underlay and add in our own stops and our own color stops and, and all of that stuff and as we elevate it through the software those things were automatically added in with the digitizing and things like that um i also saw the font list grow uh to be something huge and just um, all the features they were additional features they never took anything away they always added to it which was great and so when you started out with it young and you grew old with it it's it becomes second nature to you you ever yeah. you know you basically know where everything is and you just get excited about what was at it and i do use it as a big part of my my creativity i can't imagine doing a lot of the embroidery that i do without having the software mm -hmm. yeah it's it's matured uh, an awful lot and um i think in some ways it, it's more complex because it does a lot more things um, so there's a learning curve, but in other ways, it's a lot easier to use, you know, and yeah. like you, you know, you said you used to have to do all uh, like put in the color steps and everything. And now it's just it's done automatically. So with all the wizards, you can definitely it's much more approachable for the new user. Yes. So to do some pretty fancy stuff. And then when you decide you want to do something that a, a wizard doesn't do, then there there is the uh, capability as long as you know how to do it in the in one of the modules to do it. Absolutely, there's something for everyone in it, and that's I think that's what I, I gravitate to it for. There there might be some modules that I never touch. Um, I'm not fond of cross stitch. That's just not my cup of tea. Um, but but it is there. So if someone enjoys that, you know, that's great because there, like I said, something for everyone. Yeah, some people really love it. It's not something that excites me. There's many other aspects of the software that I work with before I would touch uh, cross stitch. But there are people that love it. And it's great that people can take a an, a paper cross stitch pattern and they can digitize it and um, make their own um, embroidery design to use in the machine that will do it much faster than if they were sitting there doing the individual stitches. Right. Right. <clears throat> Yeah. So um, you've been traveling a little bit now and um, doing some classes. So you're teaching both for uh, Viking and Faf, like me, and yes. teaching the um, software classes as well, and Serger. And you recently did a couple of Facebook Lives that people should check out, right? Which uh, topics did you do? I did um, my first Facebook live was for my Sonet and I walked them through uh, digitizing some applique designs. And then I just wrapped up a Facebook live yesterday, which was on uh, stabilizers and it was more geared towards the, the non-traditional stabilizers um, and why you would use them and why you need to have them. Yeah. So it, it was basically based on my experience. So whatever I said, you know, isn't, you know carved in stone but it was you know i gave him some tips and hints that i found um worked for me yeah but it's always good to hear from somebody who's actually used it and how they used it and what their experience was and especially before you buy it <laughs> nice yeah so um for those of you who aren't aware of it, we are the full time educators are doing Facebook lives on a regular basis and they are recorded. Once they are recorded, they are eventually are put up on the YouTube channels. And I think the YouTube is a little bit easier to search through and find the um, the older uh, Facebook lives, the ones that are, you know, the recorded lives than trying to find them on Facebook. But they they live on Facebook as well. It's just a little easier to search, I think, on, on YouTube. 
I agree, so, Nancy. Yeah, because you could go to the playlist and find all the Facebooks right there in a list. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, yeah. I was really happy when they started putting them up on YouTube. Okay, I think that um, we've covered it. Unless I, there's a question you think I should have asked and didn't ask about um, your um, sewing life or teaching sewing. No, I think I think that gets to it. I mean, I know you're just trying to keep this short and sweet. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your time, okay. and um, we will sign off now. So long to everybody. Happy sewing. Thank you. You're welcome.